when you when you decided to shift to industry 4.0 the question was why did you even bother to shift and it sounds like you were born this way right you you want to know how things work and there's an opportunity to right well we kind of in a very short period of time went through the same mental process that a lot of manufacturers are going through now oh there's these well it, it's, uh, I'll, I'll just be transparent. Uh, so we looked at a lot of the products that were out there. We became a partner with PTC on the ThingWorks platform. Uh, uh, Rick Bellotta, wicked, wicked smart guy. Yep. The product in PTC, uh, it was a hard sell. It was really hard to sell to manufacturers. We did really well with the product and implementing it and customizing, you know, creating solutions with it, but it was a hard sell. Uh, uh, and there were some hard won lessons in that whole process. And we uh, were now a partner only on the uh, the Kepler product because that product works well. We like it a lot. So I, I got I'd into say, point solutions, but then you know again we went through the same process. The PTC thing works thing. I the I I think I've told this story before, but um, it, I have always when PTC did the Kepler acquisition, I had been playing with P, with ThingWorks for about a year before the Kepler acquisition, which I think was in maybe 2017, mm -hmm. 16, 17, something like that. Right. And so PTC, we were working with a really large client actually in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, cool. And, um, and they, they were huge. They were the largest, uh, you know, the largest company in their industry in the whole planet. And they had just partnered with PTC on ThingWorks and they were going to use ThingWorks primary as their dashboarding tool. Mm -hmm. So, if, and by the way, I, I don't dislike ThingWorks. I as long as I, I I think as long as you use ThingWorks where it's best, then you know you treat it as a node and ecosystem and use it where it's best. In my yeah. opinion, yes. dashboarding is what PTC is good at. Don't try to do other things with it. Mm -hmm. Just try to visualize things with ThingWorks. Don't try to do big analytics or anything like that. Yep. They created they created ThingWorks created this other product called manufacturing apps around the time. I don't know if you ever saw it. Did you? Oh, yeah. We play with them. We work with them, try to sell them, et cetera. Yeah. So one of the, the manufacturing apps was broken up into three components. And I can't remember what they're all called now, but one of them was like production manager or something, yeah. right? right? Production manager. And and they this big customer in Harrisburg, had. I was the architect, and they and we, we had a MES system there. And they came to us and they said, PTC is really pushing this manufacturing apps thing. I need you to tell us why not to use it. I said, okay, I'll take a look at it. So I go and I take a look at it and I go, well, I can think of a bunch of reasons, but the biggest one is, is there's a finite number of states in this. <laughs> like they give you six machine states and that's it. They don't give you anything else. So you have to select between I'm, you know, I'm blocked, I'm starved. I'm, you know, I only have these six options and there's no mechanism to add any custom options. So that means my data is only going to be able to pivot along those six possible machine states. And I remember when I talked to their architect, I think they were saying that they were going to add that capability in. But what I walked away with on the ThingWorks piece was not so much that it was bad software. I actually thought it was amazing software. The issue was, was that people were trying to use it as a round peg for their square hole. I was going to use that expression. Yep. They, they took... So you have this, what I think of as a development platform with ThingWorks. Yep. Then to bring it to market, they wanted to, instead of selling a con, it's a concept sale to sell a development tool. Yep. So sell a product. So they're going to create a product. So they created three products to start with uh, to essentially say, out of the box, here's functionality, install it, connect it, done. You're good to go. And there, there was one was around production. One was around controls for the controls engineers. And I think another one might have been focused a little bit on maintenance i forget right. it's been a while i think it, i think it was i think it was maintenance it was Something performance like monitor yeah. maintenance monitor and controls monitor right yeah, Those yeah. Three. and so they developed these tools using thingworks lower point of entry lower cost or investment etc get them in place but they did end up making them very restrictive Right. And we kept asking us, well, how can you modify this? We'd love to use this, but then let's extend it, modify it, make it more flexible. Nah, didn't happen. It was, it was high technical debt is the way I said. As the company becomes, yeah. as the organization gets more and more mature, the, you, the limitations of those, thing, those tools be, creates yeah. lots and lots of technical debt. Yeah. So obviously, so then you decide to make a shift, right? So, you know, you join our community, you... But let me ask you this. So now you've moved to this technology-driven strategy. You One of the cool things, 
by the way, I hear this all the time. It pops up all the time. Is your do you guys call it the DTMA self assessment or mature? I think we call it a micro DTMA. Micro DTMA. So mm-hmm. I hear I've probably heard it from at least a dozen people. Oh, you guys really should check out Ectobox's micro oh. DTMA thing. Oh. Um, so once you made the shift to technology driven versus solution driven, mm-hmm. you know, what has that experience been like? Like how has your business changed? But, you know, what is the what's the experience been like? What have the results been? The people that we hire to do the work are so much more excited to do it because you have this plethora of tools and they can connect with and understand it. Uh, They don't feel locked into I don't want to become a ThingWorks developer or I mean, one of our senior uh, uh, developers, solution architects, uh, even from the dot net days. you know, he said, I don't want to repeat what I did in my past career to become a Microsoft Dynamics CRM developer. And then I'm locked into this lane forever. Uh, th- like Frank uh, on our team and others, like they just love having all these tools at their fingertips to say, yeah, I can solve that problem. Yeah, I can solve that problem. Yeah, I can solve that problem. And they're all really well-known, good, flexible tools. Uh, that's part of it for the, for the team. For the manufacturers, uh, the conversations, quite honestly, are so much easier uh, when I can. I mean, I'm a, a transparent, honest kind of person, sometimes a little over honest. <laughs> uh, and uh, if I can say from it, it was a struggle for me with PTC, uh, again, great people that I've gotten to know there. Uh, uh, and the tool itself is really good. Uh, but if I can't really, truly tell uh, a prospective customer, a manufacturer from my heart, I believe in this technology, this is going to work really well for you, then uh, it's just, it's not the business for me. It's not the tool, the solution for me. Uh, And when I start to talk about this stuff, I think they start to sense, I've heard this before from people, I have a passion for this and I I have to apologize. I'm like, I'm sorry, I have to get off the soapbox here. I just get so excited about this, uh, about these solutions. And I start to talk with them about it. They actually say, yeah, I want that. Like I said, that guy two years ago, I can remember uh it just makes sense to them this yeah. whole open architecture transparent not proprietary not big company not a what i think it was a, a finger puzzle you know yep. all the rest that just well makes- you said the thing that when we talk about when i talk about selling industry 4.0 i always say all the time don't sell industry 4.0 yeah solve, not solve solve problems right and the client the client sells it the client says to you i want that or what is, what's the next step or the, you know that's how you know you've solved their problem at least conceptually yes. because they're asking you what the next step is so don't be asking for the sale don't always be closing don't be doing those things be solving focused on solving problems so it sounds to me like you should be and I, and by the way for anybody who's watching this i i know kevin's business i i know kevin as a person i but i don't know the mechanics, like I don't know how many who his clients are or anything like that. So it sounds to me like you're probably at that point now where scaling your business is probably the biggest problem, right? I mean, yes. the issue is how do I get enough people who are going to support all the problems I'm solving? Is that is that accurate? That's where you're at right now? Yeah, absolutely. And so half the work that I do in prospecting, uh, quite honestly, and connecting, finding manufacturers we connect with and have the conversation. Uh, <clears throat> often enough, I end up connecting with some controls engineers and manufacturing engineers. And, you know, it turns out that they're not able to uh, act on what we're doing or they already have a solution and nobody in the company is really interested in doing that. <clears throat> but I'll look at their LinkedIn profile. I'll look at their background and, and I'll think, you know, that person might be pretty good working on our team with us. Uh, and so it's often enough, I've connected with any number of people that are going to be really good for us to work with. And we're just kind of lining them up and maintaining those relationships, bringing them in on a part-time contractor basis to evaluate, figure out if we can work with them, going through the interview process, of course. Uh, uh, and then we start to bring them in. Uh, yeah, it's scaling is is uh, a, a big challenge. And that's quite honestly, one of the ways that we're, we're doing it. And the other challenge that we have too, self-imposed, uh, is that we have a vision to create a suite of products for manufacturers that are quite honestly in the MES space, if you will, uh-huh. that are solving a lot of problems for manufacturers. And we uh, think of it like we are creating additional nodes 
uh, in that ecosystem. And one of the ones that we we have developed now, we are informally, uh, we haven't come up with a real name for it. We're calling it Hank right now, just for a stupid code name. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is uh, based on the theory of constraints, drum buffer rope uh, for discrete manufacturers, production scheduling, uh, and get it to connect in uh, to the uh, unified namespace data broker, uh, pull data from the ERP system, and then provide it to uh, the plant floor, uh, et cetera. It's, <clears throat> it's going to be really interesting. We have a we're starting to we're going to be going beta fairly soon and uh, improving and adding on a lot to the product as well. So you've done all this in basically twenty months, right? I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. in so there are a lot of people in our community, a lot of people who listen to this podcast. I know who are young people who are thinking about doing their own thing at some point, right? I want to mm -hmm. either want to be a one man shop or I want to I want to build an integrator or a solutions provider. So any suggestions? So you've done this in, in the 20 months, you, you've owned businesses for a really long time, but this, yeah. this venture of yours has been a, you know, we'll just say it's been 20 months and now your biggest problem is scale. The problem isn't viability. The problem isn't, you know, uh, having clients. It doesn't have, problems, right? The issue is scale. Any recommendations to people who are looking to do the same step right or take the same step you did? Where do I start? <laughs> uh, the, uh, I mean, I do recognize or think of us as uh, kind of a 20 year startup. We're kind of starting over. All right. Hey, gang, as a quick reminder, if you want to sign up for our MES Bootcamp, which is starting in September and running through the end of November, where we're going to teach you how to build your own manufacturing execution system with core capabilities, go to iiot.university or click on the link up here. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the very first session.